That is still unmade. Which means either the head nurse didn't return the entire time from when Lynette laid down up until she left the bed, or the nurse intentionally left it this way. Oh no, that's not a good sign. <sighs> Panic! Hey, you guys, there's a slip of paper over here! A slip of paper? It's right over here, and there's a bunch written on it too. It reads, out of respect for your usual practices, I'll use a piece of paper or card. Uh, ho, 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 no. You may consider this as me giving you my best regards. This is... Is... is that all? Is there anything on the back? The back. Uh, this... this is... Show me. Now. <laughs> that, that look on your face. P Paimon's reading it now. Would you care to guess where Miss Lynette of the Fatui could be right now? No. Could she have... Is she already... Right asleep. Did he deliberately leave the infirmary unguarded to use it as bait? Wait, you mean he was aware of our goals from the very beginning? But why? We didn't run into any trouble last time, and he also never reached out to us since. Why did he choose to act during our second infiltration attempt instead of the first? Yes, that is a crucial question. Risley, he doesn't do anything without a clear goal or reason. So this means he had no concerns about your activities from the very beginning. You are not from the same camp as us. You were sent down here by Nervulet, so you have no conflict of interest with Risley. We're a completely different story, though. Why didn't he go after you as well? I'd like to know that, too. Why did he only go after her? <sighs> Don't panic. Just think everything over. I have to stay calm. This is not like what happened last time. The situation's different now. <laughs> Wait. You're right. Wait, but that means the fact that Fremine was able to leave the grounds. Could Risley have let him go as well? But what does he gain by letting Fremine leave like that? I get it now. He literally made them both disappear. So he's challenging me and trying to provoke me, I'm sure of it. We never should have sent out Fremine. We had to go through all that trouble to find an opening to sneak him around the guards and into the pipe, and we even thought luck was on our side. If Risley let him leave on purpose, then he's probably in a terrible spot now as well. Lenny's getting more and more panicked. We have to calm him down. Lenny, calm down. Be like this, Lenny. Fremine wouldn't have left if we hadn't told you about Child. That was our fault. No, I'm the leader of this operation, and I'm the one responsible for this team. Oh, he panicking. He failed to protect them. I'll go talk to Risley. Hey, don't be reckless! Traveler, please talk some sense into him! I simply cannot allow Lynette to be abducted again. I have to go. I'll find a way to get them back. Oh, this ain't good. He was there the whole time. Why is she smiling? Right. I feel like we still have some room to make changes on these details. It's not impossible, but it'll require extensive testing. Is that so? Very well. Then please be mindful of the time. Huh? Is someone? Pack everything up. Whoever's outside is eavesdropping. They'll probably come in once we stop talking. Are you okay? Oh, these two. As expected, they've already found this place. Though they are quite sharp. Buh. Delightful turn of events. I like smart people, but I also like playing dumb. I like the feeling of being trusted. That's so evil! Being able to read human expressions is quite the useful skill. Lenny, wait! It's no use. We have to catch up to him. Boy. 
You better come back. Boy, I'm warning you. I wondered when we'd end up here. Oh, a stretch. I'll do that real quick. Ugh. Come out and face me, Risley. <laughs> oh, God, Lenny. Hmm. Aren't we at an administrative office space? Why don't you at least try to follow even a couple rules from the fortress's indoor management regulations? What did you do to my sister? I ran into the young miss at the infirmary. I'd heard that she was suffering from quite the migraine, so I decided to invite her over for a cup of tea. I do have some teas in my collection that can work wonders against such an illness. Stop joking around! Where did you take my siblings? I have also heard that your performances are quite the spectacle. Miss Lynette would sometimes enter a box filled with water, only to emerge the next second from another place altogether. Maybe she'll appear behind you right now if you were to turn your head. Is he trying to trick me into turning my head? No, he's probably not looking to attack me right now. All of the hostages are in his hands, and he's even in the mood for small talk. That means Lynette is probably still alive. You knew we were investigating the infirmary from the start. So you deliberately aroused the Traveler's suspicions and baited us into continuing our investigation, just so that you'd be able to kidnap Lynette. <sighs> As for Fremene... No, you probably didn't even interfere with Child's escape. You let him go, so you could purge the Fatui members that we had planted into your ranks. There was no need to do so. The Fortress of Meripeed is a pretty pleasant place. Most people enjoy their lives here. The only ones who act differently are those with personal agendas. It was quite easy to identify your colleagues. Bang. We removed our original members and spread the news of Child's escape so Father would assign our team to come down and investigate. Fremenet has also fallen into your hands, right? If you're oh so omnipotent and so in control, why would you need hostages? One correction. Lynette is in my hands right now, but Fremenet is not. He's not? What do you really want? Lenny! Oh, wonderful. Everyone is here, so I'll only need to say this once. Thank you so much for cooperating with me. Where are Lynette and Fremenet? Meager into the point, I see. Alas, only Miss Lynette is currently having a cup of the Fortress's finest tea. Although, as per your original plan, Mr. Fremenet should also have returned to the Fortress by now. But he has neither shown up within my gates nor has he been taken into any kind of custody. So where do you think he may be right now? Wait, you can't mean you locked him outside in the sea? I closed the fortress's gate to the outside world. That's all. Fermanet's a star diver, so he should be fine, right? No, we're still here, so he'd definitely try to find a way to come back for us. So we can't assume he might have made a break for the surface. But why would I do this, you may be asking? to have an audience with you, of course. My intel tells me that Mr. Linney is a great magician, so it's only natural for me to want to have some cards of my own when it comes to negotiating. Schemes within schemes with this place. Besides, I do recall you mentioning to Miss Lynette that you've always wanted to have a face-to-face -face meeting with the Lord of the Fortress of Meripede, regardless of whether it was in a personal or a professional capacity. Well, you've got your wish. So, you've been keeping tabs on us before we even set foot in the fortress. Some of my folks just happened to hear a thing or two, that's all. In any case, I will be straight with you. I was willing to play dumb and turn a blind eye, so we had a pleasant few days playing games together here. But once you started focusing on the Forbidden Zone, all of that changed. Mr. Linney, the cards are stacked against you right now. Miss Lynette is in my hands, and Mr. Fremenet is still slowly being pickled out there in the brine. You know just as well as I that he cannot last out there forever. You need do but one thing to guarantee their safety. I would like you to contact your superior, 
and ideally invite her over for a cup of tea with me. You want to see father? <laughs> but why should she bother giving you an audience? Isn't that what she wanted to do in the first place? If she cares for the well-being of her dearest children, she should have plenty of motivation to join me for a parent's evening. I've heard that the bonds between the members of the House of the Hearth are like the bonds of family. I don't see why she would refuse. Why did you think Father sent us to handle the Fortress of Meripete? This place is basically a no-man's land. It wouldn't be fitting for anyone as important as a Harbinger like Father to come here in person. Oh, I see. So it's because she doesn't care for my place here. <sighs> That's such a shame. After all, I've amassed quite the tea collection. I was looking forward to sharing it with her. Both Monsieur Nervillet and Lady Farina have already received many samples as gifts. Was this the extent of your master plan to get to father? No matter how much pressure you may put on me, I won't allow you to use us to blackmail her. You people really are difficult to get along with. All I'm asking for is a face-to-face -face conversation. Does she truly have no interest in the fortress's secret? Mr. Linney, you have one last chance to invite your father here. If you refuse. <sighs> Linny! Why do you have to do this? Instead of asking why I'm doing this, why don't you try to see things from my perspective for a second? From the very beginning, the Fatui has been actively infiltrating my fortress. I gave you a warning by cutting off the first few operatives I found, but that only caused you to double down. Had you given up on the fortress then and there, I'd have no reason to want to talk. Mr. Fremenet left the fortress on his own, and Miss Lynette tried to pry out my secrets right in front of me. No matter how you look at it, the responsibility for this falls on you. I... I shouldn't ask Father to do anything because of us. Six. Five. Wait, I... Two. One. Time's up. It really is a shame, Mr. Lenny. Riley! Negotiations have broken down. Please leave, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for my afternoon tea. I'll find him right now. <laughs> Please wait, can we really not talk about this some more? Yeah, listen to the traveler. If you can't talk to Lenny, can you at least talk to us? You do realize that I'm only letting you go because of Nervillette, yes? You're here helping him out. And I've already done my best to stay out of your way. But that doesn't mean you can just do whatever you want. The fortress may be small and remote, but it still has its own set of laws. Please spare from Annette and Lynette. Hmm. Then how about this? Those who are capable deserve respect. You've spent quite some time investigating my home turf by now, so why don't you tell me a thing or two about what you found, hmm? I'll ask you three questions. Answer all of them correctly, and I'll agree to your request. Mm-hmm. Okay. One. Regarding the hidden rules of the production zone, what is the truth behind the one about not being allowed to work for three days in a row? Check out correctly. If you keep working without any rest during lunch hour on the third day, you'll find a portion of strange meat in your welfare meal. Good thing we've already run a thorough investigation on this. Let's see if I can remember all the clues. We will find an answer if I piece everything together. Oh boy. Change me. We'll see if you keep working continuously. I've been told that the infirmary is always empty for the half hour just before lunch. Oh. We often see Miss Sejuine observing the prisoners at work near the production zone. Seems like she can perceive the general state of a person's health just by looking at them. That's her. For what circumstances does a strange meat appear? According to Collins, the Pancration tournament only took place. Nope. It's lunchtime. The Fanta promoter has been struck. Nope. Fanta's internal report suggests that. Nope. We often see Miss Sejuine. Ab I've been told lunch. the infirmary is always empty for the half hour. Just oh. Why does a strange meat appear the way it does? The Fanta promoter has been struggling because he doesn't recognize the real value of coupons. The research notes said that the Melusine race perceives the world very differently from humans. Because of that. That's why. Ah, so that's what's going on! I don't understand. 
understands it now, who would have guessed? Because you're working so hard. You just saved a snail's life. I just realized what's going on. If you work for three days in a row and get overworked, the nurse who comes and watches some people working notices and makes you a special lunch that's weird food because it's not people food, it's Melusine food. The hidden rule of the production guild. <gasps> She's got the glasses on again! Let's go! Get strange meat in their welfare meal. How did you save a snail's life? I want to hear about it, Void Cat. Disappeared, but in reality, they were all prepared by Sijuin, the head nurse. She often visits the production zone to observe the workers' health and makes a note of anyone who has worn themselves out after three full days of work. I have a sense of duty as the head nurse, as well as her genuine concern for the workers' health. Sijuin visits the cafeteria right before lunch and cooks an extra dish for those who can use the stamina boost. Sijuin has only the best intentions with her surprise gift and doesn't want anyone to find out about what she does. However, unfortunately, Melusine's as a race <laughs> the world differently from humans and their sense of aesthetics is even more alien to us. The recipients of her lovingly prepared special meals cannot taste the care within and usually just freak out. Are we on the right track? Not bad. You've uncovered Sijuin's secret and even guessed her intentions correctly as well. It's nice to know that her efforts have not gone unacknowledged. That's so cute. I am gonna say in about um, a little over four minutes we're gonna have ads go. Just cause I am trying to get to a spot I feel like I can stop so that I can sleep. I'm just gonna keep playing through them. There's no break for this one. We're just railroading through this next ad break. I think most of the people who are here and actively watching are subscribed, so I don't think anyone will be inconvenienced by it. I apologize, we're just gonna keep going. All right, now for my next question. There She's are just doing her best. Rules in the Pancration Ring, including the one that you're not allowed to support both sides of a fight. Why is that? I was in the loading dock and the delivery guy almost crushed it, so then I grabbed it and brought it down. It's like, aww, that was nice of you. Done a lot of research on this matter. Let me shift through what I found to come up with the correct answer. Alright, what happens if you violate the pancreation ring's hidden rule? You get the package of containing strange blood. Sanja's internal reports suggest that they're starting a new trial of an unnamed and unpackaged product. But the product has to undergo a trial because even Fanta's own employees have a lot of reservations about it. This is the one. Why does a strange blood-colored fluid look the way it does? The Fanta promoter has been struggling because he doesn't recognize the real value of coupons. Question as to why is a good cut question. Collins, the Pancreation tournament only took place because the Fanta company sponsored. Oh, actually, can I take this back? Internal reports suggest that they're starting a new. Oh, I can switch. Okay. Uh. Internal reports. Yep. Is the new product? That is only those who buy tickets to support both fighters receive the package. The Fanta promoter has been struggling because he doesn't. This might not be the right order. Oh, it is! Yay! I have the correct hypothesis. I told you it was just a bottle of Fanta. That hidden rule of the pancreation ring is about how, um, people are not supposed to bet on both boxers at the same time. And if they do, they'll receive a package containing a strange blood-colored liquid. People get scared when they see it because they've subconsciously begun to associate it with the missing boxer. But really, it's just a bottle of the latest yet to be named and packaged new Fanta trial product. A blood red drink. It's no wonder even Fanta's own staff were questioning the company's decision making. The company, facing backlash from its own staff, decided to try to trial the product on a smaller scale to see how it might be received by customers. They came to the Fortress of Meropi, 
and offered to sponsor the Pancration Tournament so they could push their new product. But the Duke completely refused to even entertain the idea. The Duke, knowing how valuable coupons are in the Fortress, knew that only total idiots who didn't understand their true value would bother buying a Fanta product here. And so, only those who proved their <laughs> by being dumb enough to bet on two opposing sides of the same match were selected to receive the drink. I acknowledge the effort you've put into bringing the truth of this mystery to light. Although, based on your description, that Fanta promoter is a bit too careless with his words. I may just reconsider my collaboration with the company. All right, and here's the final question. What's the secret behind our head nurse and all of her patients in the infirmary? I collect enough info to answer that question. Stop your cruel and pointless games, Risley. You know that we haven't finished our investigation, so there's no way we can answer the last question. The thought of sparing Lynette and Fremenet never even crossed your mind. Lenny. Pay for this. <laughs> I have. Oh, close one. I owe you, Siege Wing. That was a fantastic shot. There was nothing, Your Grace. Siege Wing? Though this gun may look like a toy, it's actually fully functional, as I just demonstrated. Siege Wing. You. What happened to the animations? He was his accomplice in all this? of the fortress and thus protecting it is my duty when monsieur Mervillette asked me to come here he told me that my job would be to take care of the well-being of everyone here i am merely discharging my duty but if you mean what you just said then isn't lenny someone you should be looking after as well isn't he a resident here just like the rest of us plus with Nouvellet, why not learn a thing or two about virtue from him but i really am just doing what monsieur Nouvellet told me to do Everything I did are done to protect them. Had I not, they would be in far more dire straits right now. His Grace knows it too, right? Your Grace? Do you mind proving my innocence to them? <sighs> my dear Siege Wing, whatever shall I do with you? Would it have killed you to just wait another minute or two? Well, it's nearly time after all. <sighs> the way you do things can be truly frustrating sometimes, Your Grace. I figured I should try to talk some sense into you. You just got a little brood. No. What are you talking about? What kind? Sick me if you want. But let them go. Mm hmm How touching. Can you just give me one more minute? Don't be like that, Your Grace. All right, everyone, calm down. Two more visitors will be arriving any time now. I'll go get a cup of tea. Miss Siegeween, I leave Miss Lynette in your care. You. What are you doing? I believe I hear footsteps. Door suddenly slams open. A familiar figure bursts into the happy. Oh, it's Clarine! Happy Clarine, everybody! Ah, uh, Miss Clarine. My door. Fremenay. <laughs> Fremenay. Work. <laughs> she really just looked at us and went, work. I'm sorry about shooting you, Mr. Linney. The tranquilizing effect will begin to wear off soon. Please take it easy in the meantime, though. What happened to Premine? Wasn't he diving just outside of the fortress? Why is he looking like... like this? Symptoms it can't be. Where are the symptoms? Face, accelerated pulse. He must have consumed primordial seawater. What did you say? Uh, please, make some space. I'll need to give Mr. Fremini a more thorough checkup. Your Grace, I'll leave the rest to you. I'll talk to Clorand while you get Fremini to where he needs to be. Everything else can wait. Gosh, she's so cool.
But what the fuck is going on? His expression looks disgusted. It seems like he'd rather not have Sejuin touch Fremenae. Well, he didn't stop her, since it's obvious that Fremenae doesn't does require urgent medical care. Sejuin is examining Fremenae carefully. She doesn't look too upset, which is a good sign. Fremenae will be okay. How is he? His symptoms are probably caused by an acute ingestion of a large amount of primordial seawater. Still, his condition is not critical. Of course. It would be best if he stayed for further observation. Let's leave him here for now, and move him to the infirmary once he's recovered a bit more. <sighs> Sorry. I am aware that the infirmary may not be your favorite place in the world at the moment. We do only have a single clinic in the fortress, however. Mm -hmm. Why would he ingest a large amount of primordial seawater after leaving the fortress? How could that possibly happen? Please, look after Mr. Fremenay for the moment. I'll go fetch some medicine and a respirator. Oh, I'll bring Miss Lynette back with me. Where is she? How is she right now? Oh, she just took a nap in an empty room after I tranquilized her. If my calculations are correct, she should also be waking up right around now. You might not believe me, but His Grace and I actually made some snacks and tea for her. Isn't all water primordial seawater in Genshin? Apparently that's like a specific thing. And it was a big part, like, part one of the Fontaine story had there be a whole, like, thing with a serial disappearance case uh, where it turns out that if anybody from Fontaine has pure um, primordial seawater poured on them, they will dissolve into water? I don't know, it's just a thing that happens in this world. But the primordial sea is Lexi! Speaking of sea. Oh heck, now I know I've really stayed up too long because I was gonna raid you, Lexi. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, I messed up. Oh no! <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> Lexi, thank you for the raid! How was the rest of your stream? How was TFT? I suppose I have a tab I can close now. Oh hey, I know those four goobers! It's a good clip. <laughs> that was a <laughs> Couldn't sleep, so I had a feeling mine was gonna be short. Ah, uh, you got your butt kicked repeatedly. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, thank you so much for rating, Lexi. I'm sorry you got your butt kicked, but I hope you still had a good time. Glad you liked that clip. Thank you. Yes, I did. I did. Ah. Uh. I hope we're able to do some Sea of Thieves shenanigans next week. I really do. I missed that this week. So it was nice. Chat was lovely company. I hope so, yeah. I will admit, I was very extra EP yesterday, so I'm kind of I'm kind of glad we had the kind of extra day to rest. And I was able to get some stuff done and all that, but... I still missed the Sea of Thieves time. But there is next week. Yes. <laughs> well, Lexi, after your stream, if you need to do any self-care, any aftercare, get some food, get some water. If you need to go rest yourself or whatever you need to do, please make sure you take care of it. You are more than welcome to hang out here otherwise. And everyone from Luxie's chat, welcome in. If you don't know who I am, my name is Double A. I'm a battery VTuber. I like to keep everything positively charged. 24 hour stream that is not what's happening i'm being held hostage ow by how long this prison quest is but this is not a 24 hour stream because i need to be here probably a little more than 12 hours for now for alu's birthday among us games so 
Are you sure? I am sure. I, listen, the second I know what's going on here and we are done, I am sleeping and that's that. <laughs> You know that image from It's Always Sunny with Charlie Day staring at the board, like looking all crazy? That's me trying to figure out what the heck's going on. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And it's with a lot of my friends I haven't been able to do a lot of stuff with, especially like with stream and stuff. So I'm really excited. I think it'll be a lot of fun. All right. So, ah, to catch everyone up, this guy found out that his siblings had been kidnapped, but apparently it was all a ruse. And the the warden, Risley, I guess was just trying to get a rise out of him for some reason. I don't know. He's trying to, to, to get, like, they're part of the Fatui, and they're trying to get the, the main person uh, who, like, adopted them, but who's also, like, a bad guy boss, but also not a bad person lady. I don't know. I don't know. We will just continue. I apologize if things don't make sense, but buckle up for some story. When he has finally begun to stop tensing the muscles on his face, it seems he trusts what Seedween just said. I'm innocent. Killer, you are a lot of things, but innocent? Really? Really? What's that look on your face? I thought I made good time on the way back. Oh, I'm just admiring your punctuality. Had you arrived just a few minutes later, Sijui may have been forced to shoot Mr. Linny again. How's the situation out there? The water has changed. It's pretty much as expected. The concentration of primordial seawater has increased significantly. What? I was only out there a short time, so it wasn't too bad. But if one were to stay for any significant amount of time... Well, you can see how that boy is doing. Where was he when you found him? The abandoned zone at the end of the pipes. A good distance into the water. Closer than I thought. He must have recognized it early on and tried desperately to swim back. Locking the door was necessary. I don't think we could have saved two. Well, I did try to convince him that I had my reasons. Never seems to work, though. It would probably work on New Relent. He has a knack for picking out who had good intentions, even when the outcomes were all terrible. Uh. It's a bad sign if you're having to plead your case to Nervalette. Want some tea? Mm, not particularly. If you want to drink some that badly, just say so. And I love Clarind. Fine, I'd like to get some tea. Want me to get you a cup too, since I've already made it? Uh, might as well then, I suppose. Actually, do you have a towel? I would like to dry my hair. <clears throat> Are you okay? I'll be fine. They're all here now. Don't worry about me. Y'all right, I'm say so? I'm not gonna say anything. Are you sure? You don't look alright. My hands and feet are still a bit weak, but that's probably just the residual effects of the tranquilizer shot. I'm back, everyone. Lynette's okay. Confirmed. Lenny. Oh, Traveler. Hi, Mon. You're here, too. Hermione? Is he... He'll be fine. But for now, please help me lift him up. Lenny and Lynette immediately come to lift Hermione up, but they're... Okay, never mind. His breathing's beginning to slow down. Give me a hand and help me get him to the infirmary. Yeah, I'll take him from this side. Lynette, together? On it. Traveler, you seem pretty worried about him. Want to come with us? Yep. The Duke and Clarinda are gone. Yeah, they literally want to go drink some tea. They probably went to get some tea. <laughs> uh, the Duke will explain the truth in just a bit. Miss Florand will need a break, since she only just returned from rescuing Fremenay out of the sea. Florand saved Fremenay from the sea. Just what happened there?
That's what I'm asking. <laughs> uh, so ready to be out of jail. I feel like I've been here for so long. Life on the inside changes, you guys. Don't do crime. And if you do crime, make sure it's gay crime. <laughs> I'm losing my mind, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. Descending into madness. Oh, yeah. Yep. He's awake. Fremini, how do you feel? I'm very happy Lexi raided me. I appreciate it a bunch. But it broke something in me because I was like, at least when I'm done, I can raid Lexi and hang out in there as I slowly relax and then go to sleep. And now it's like, I don't know what I'm gonna do when we're done with the quest. <laughs> Here. Uh, where am I? And the Fontaine quest line is so much longer than the Sumeru one, it feels like. The infirmary at the Fortress of Meripede, Mr. Fremini, and you are no longer in any danger. How do you feel? Don't push yourself if you're not feeling up to it. Uh, Traveler, Paimon, it's been so long. Like, in half an hour, my dad's gonna wake up, and he's gonna be like, Why are you still awake? Why are you still streaming? <laughs> and I'm just gonna be like, I went to jail! <laughs> uh, the sea. There's something wrong with the seawater. It's okay. We can talk about it after you've recovered. No, listen to me. This is really serious. There's primordial seawater mixed into the regular seawater. I don't know why it's there, but no one should touch it. What happened after you snuck into the pipes? Pipes... Uh... Right, the pipes. It's all coming back to me now. Mm -hmm. There it is. There's the pipes. Uh huh. Blackness. I'm in. Hmm. Seems like this pipe hasn't been used in a long time. Romani did not go with I'm in. <laughs> Master child B. Thank God Fremenet talks to himself. Oh, what? Hey, look. Fremenet uses a great sword? Oh my god, there's actual gameplay. I forgot Genshin Impact had actual gameplay and wasn't all cutscenes. This mechanism looks like it's been tampered with. Could he have done it? I don't know how I'm gonna solve puzzles at this time of night, but you know what? Figure it out. Well, at least to let me bring my 79 chickens in here. So if the boy get hurt in combat, I can, you know, use that. 
does this button do? That brings it up. Other button probably rotates it. If I had to wager a guess. It's getting stuck on something. Oh. Seems like I'll have to avoid those obstacles while I turn it. So you turn it and put it back down. You turn it and then bring it up. My uh -huh. yep, yep, yep. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yep, 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 yep. You bring it up. Then we get to run back. And then we can cross. And then we'll be a family again. <laughs> Whee! Oh, I thought that was a ledge I could land on. It was not. This is where the water starts. Okay. Huh. Master Child probably dived into the water. I'll go take a look as well. He's gonna jump in and just be like, why is it spicy? You say cat? No? I don't think I did. The vegetation here is a bit more sparse. These traces aren't natural. A person must have left them. And recently. I should be going in the right direction. Oh, there are traces here too. I need to keep going. Huh? The traces are gone. But I don't see where he could have gone from here. Ah, wait. What the? My heart is racing, and it's getting harder and harder to breathe. What's going on? No good. I have to get back. They still don't know anything about what's going on. If I turn back right now, I should still be able to make it. The edge of that pipe had primordial. Uh oh, we gotta go. Oh, my health is draining. Chicken. Haha, <laughs> it worked. <laughs> I can't die here. This is, this is bad. I'm feeling worse and worse, and I'm still underwater. Oh shit. A Clarind. Wasn't he gone for two days? We'll look past that. We'll just ignore that. That's it's fine. <laughs> so in other words, the trail you were following vanished, and you had no idea where Master Child could have gone. But there was also no obvious place for him to have disappeared to. Mm-hmm. That's right. I tried my best to swim back, but I had already put some distance between myself and the fortress, and I just couldn't find the strength to keep going. I probably passed out some time after that. And you know the rest. No worries. No worries, Void Cat. Miss Clarand brought you back, but we also don't know why she just suddenly appeared at the fortress. Or why she went out to save you. Miss Clorand, you say? I must go thank her in person. You're still too weak for Manet. You can go after you've had some more rest. Miss Lynette is right. I believe Miss Clorand will stay here as a guest for another few days. So there's no need to hurry. A 
guest, then I can assume Risley was the one who invited her to come down here? You should ask His Grace about that. He'll be able to explain better than me. Got it? I'll go yeah, talk to him. It's about time he actually told us what's going on. Wanna come with us, Libby? Uh, what are you worried about? No, please go on without me. I don't oh, did someone say don't worry? Honey. The logical part of my brain is aware that we're safe right now, but I still can't bring myself to leave. Both of you are just in danger. Mm. Understood. Then let's just sit together for a while. In that case, I'll leave the infirmary to you. The traveler and I are going to head out for now. As long as you stay in here, I don't think you'll be disturbed. Thank you. I did? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm so tired. I've been in this prison for so long. I don't know what's happening anymore. Who am I? What am I? Must continue for the prima jumps and the plot. <sighs> I'm worried because it's been almost 13 hours since you started streaming. Gotta know what happens, Ark. Gotta know. Gotta know. <laughs> What's this punk up to, huh? We gotta know. Excuse me. I take it Mr. Fremenet's condition has stabilized? Of course. I wouldn't have left the infirmary otherwise. I've been expecting those two, but might I inquire as to the purpose of your visit, Miss Seedwing? I wanted to check up on Miss Cloran. How are you feeling? Mostly fine, I think. If you don't mind, I'd like to perform another quick physical exam. It'll just take a few minutes. All right. Thank you for looking out for me. I'll take my leave for now, then. Want to explain yourself, Risley? <laughs> Risley, you got some splaining to do. Of course, but I'm not partial to the word choice of explain. How about enlighten? I'm about to enlighten my boot to your ass, my guy. Please enlighten us as much as you'd like. Where should I begin? How about you start by asking me any questions you have? You can start with whichever one you'd like to get answered the most. Begin. Did you know about Lenny's goals from the very beginning? Hmm, no. I just knew they were Fatui operatives sent to the fortress by the Knave. As for their specific goals, I only figured those out as you made progress on your investigation. You managed to monitor and stay ahead of them even though you didn't know what they were trying to do? They came here with ulterior motives. I'm quite adept at discerning what that kind of behavior signals. Why didn't you try to stop them? Initially, I thought their goal was just to investigate Child's disappearance. Linny suggested that I had deliberately let him escape. But in truth, I didn't really do anything special to help or hinder him while he was here. Everything he did, from finding helpers to leaving this place, he did on his own. Of course, it's inevitable that the Knave would make a big deal out of her fellow Harbinger's unexplained disappearance. I'm also quite curious about where that Harbinger went. So I figured I might as well let the Fatui do their own investigative work. All I care about is the answer. That's fair. So you were hoping Lenny's group would just do your work for you! You make it sound like that's a bad thing. Unfortunately, things didn't go as planned. I assume that Fremenet has told you already, the ratio of primordial seawater around the fortress of Meripede is on the rise. The Forbidden Zone has always been Lenny's target, and you got roped into that investigation after running into him. I began to intervene out of concern for your safety, and also to prevent the fortress from becoming entangled in more irksome matters. Oh, that's the Forbidden Zone. It's the Primordial Water. Are the rumors true? That you're also a former criminal? Now why would you put it like that? Isn't staying here all day and serving as the manager of the fortress a kind of sentence unto itself? Another form of prison? I just happen to have some support from the rest of the inmates. That's all. Me, of 
course. I paid her good Mora to come down to the fortress for some field work. As a champion duelist, Miss Cloran could be considered to be an independent party. I needed to find an exceptionally capable person to help me get through the impending crisis. And saving Fremenet was part of that crisis? You can think of it like that, hmm. yes. Jeez. Credit where credit Ow. is due, that boy is quite adept at diving. Had conditions Jeez. not been as hostile as they were, he probably would have found the missing Harbinger already. The Forbidden Zone really exists. What's inside That's of it? That's not something you should be asking out there. Nevelet only asked you to investigate Child's whereabouts. All I need to prove to you is that the Forbidden Zone had nothing to do with the Harbinger's disappearance. That should be clear now that you've spoken to Fremenet. But we've already uncovered that there's something wrong with the infirmary, and we've answered a bunch of questions that you threw at us. Isn't it about time that you answer our last question in return? You make a compelling case. Do you really want to know the answer that badly? Yeah. Yeah, Paimon really wants to know! Even if the truth may not be pleasant? Yeah. Follow me. Oh my god, it's the next Five Nights at Freddy's game, isn't it? Dear god, it's hideous. <laughs> Still going, I see. Yep! <laughs> Seems you've forgotten just what kind of place the Fortress of Meripede is. There's Half-Life 3 down here. It's... It's still not done. How is it still not done, Risley? How? <laughs> Stand on the central plate. Wait, is there a secret mechanism or... Whoa! So everyone has taken their position in the circular plate, it begins to slowly move downwards. So, this is the Forbidden Zone? Honestly, for a place so well hidden, Paimon sure doesn't see anything special. And that is... What a huge door! There are three such isolation gates in total. Generally speaking, I'm the only one who's allowed to go inside. Hence the name forbidden zone am i correct to assume you're going to run on back and tell your little patui friends everything well i my mom wasn't thinking of keeping anything from them <laughs> well i'd advise you wait until you've seen the whole truth of this place for yourself before deciding whether or not to tell them interesting i really want to know and it's only me there's no one else on my team right now. Interesting. Huh. So there's a switch on the side. Stand back. Whoa! They all just went up one by one. What's that in the middle of the room? Go on, have a look. Hmm. This room is really empty with nothing in here, which is quite strange on its own. There's also a device smack dab in the middle of the room, which looks like some kind of massive voice gate? I've been interested in what lies beyond that gate ever since I assumed leadership of the Fortress of Meripede. Of course, it would be unwise to recklessly open it. But it'd also be risky and negligent to simply ignore any potential danger that could be behind it. The readings on that dashboard have not budged since the day when I first laid eyes on this place. But over the past year, the needle has crept upwards from its original position, likely because some parameter it's been tracking has changed, if only infinitesimally. Normally I would have ignored it, but I happen to have some free time when I noticed it, so I investigated. Any guesses what the reading could be tracking? The temperature? Very reasonable guesses. I've considered both of those as well. Unfortunately, our dashboard is tracking something less ordinary. Interesting. The temperature should vary with weather and climate changes, so for something that rarely shifts, the water pressure is more likely. We ran a few tests to increase the pressure from the outside, 
but the readings didn't change at all. Later on, a few more possibilities occurred to me. Primordial so stuff, maybe. Connection with the primordial sea. I began to make a few preparations based on that hypothesis. Over the past few days, the needle has moved again. With that and the symptoms that Fremene displayed after leaving the fortress, I can now confidently conclude that the readings represent the concentration of primordial seawater in the seawater nearby. Hey, you got some more sleep. Good job, Cole. The concentration of primordial seawater? But we're already under the sea. And that is precisely the problem. We're at the bottom of the sea, and now we're surrounded by toxic seawater. Somehow, primordial seawater got mixed in, and the concentration is steadily rising. The primordial seawater is continually leaking into the sea. Yes, that's very likely. Why is the hot man talking about Kyogre? <laughs> really, though. Seems like you've figured it out. I believe the primordial sea lies directly beneath this sluice gate. For some reason, the primordial seawater levels have risen significantly, and it's now very close to us. The indicators are now red. Although the gate still stands, some primordial seawater has already leaked out and mixed into the sea around us. If this continues, soon it will no longer be able to hold back the primordial sea at all. The skate falls, all of Fontaine will fall with it. Yeah, you know what the legends say. If this place falls, then everyone in Fontaine will be turned into puddles in the span of a night. Oh, that's not good. But that's just too weird. Why would the fortress of Meripede be built right above a sluice gate for the primordial sea? Who built this place anyway? Your expression tells me you think this might be part of a vast, complicated conspiracy. To be honest, you might find the actual answer may be exceedingly boring. It's just that the secret of the Forbidden Zone had been long forgotten by the nation before I rediscovered it with my research. There's no single founder of the Fortress of Meripede in any traditional sense. What we know about its history has been left to us by the people who used to live here. When the previous Hydro Archon, Egeria, ruled the land, all convicted criminals from Fontaine were exiled. The people drove the criminals away like a wolf pack chasing away the banished. The criminals received no sympathy of any kind from the people. They were exiled to the desolate seaside, where they experienced only pain, struggle, and the bone-chilling cold. Some of them began to repent and pray to the Hydro Archon, asking if there was still anything they could do. The Hydro Archon took pity on them and said, You may go guard my secret deep underneath the waves. And so, leaning on the power of the Hydro Archon, they gathered underneath the sea and began to build a fortress. They became a community down there in the deeps, and over the years helped it to grow. As the number of exiles increased, more and more people joined the community. When the first group of exiles died, they left the yet unfinished fortress to their successors. So I am right, this is underwater Australia. <laughs> the Hydro Archon continued the land of support, allowing the fortress and what it stood for to continue growing ever larger. Before long, this dark underwater fortress became the sinner's only home. And with that, the people here stopped referring to the fortress as a prison. They saw themselves as repenting sinners who would regain their freedom once they had sufficiently... Arnair! But as time went on, people also realized that the fortress was a lonely place. Once they had gotten used to life here, they could no longer feel comfortable living in the overworld. Once they had finished serving their sentences, some people left and some others chose to stay. They'd find some idle position and let their withered souls fade away with the ancient secrets of the past. After many, many centuries, few people still remember the reason for the fortress's founding. Excuse me. They just see it as an integral pillar of Fontanian society, as the place where criminals deserve to be sent. Now and again, researchers manage to break one law or another and live out their days in the fortress. I learned all this from an elderly historian. Everyone else just thought he'd made it all up. But now you know every part of that history is true. Indeed. That's just as the prophecy says. If this gate fails, then everyone will be dissolved into the sea. 
Do you believe in prophecies? To be frank, not really. But sadly, that hasn't stopped this prophecy from proving all too accurate. Hello, Caden. How are you doing today? Prophecies are troublesome things. Just hearing one will create the first wave of panic. Seeing signs of it will bring about the second, and actually witnessing it in real time, the third. So it's the Duke of Meripede. Just what do you plan to do about it? Let's go somewhere else. I want to show you something. Hmm. This is it. Oh, those two. Perfect timing. The results from our last round of experiments have. Wait, Jurya, he's not alone. Huh? Loravine and Jurya? No need to panic, you two. I've already told them about our plan. What? After you warned us not to tell a single soul about any of. I'm skeptical as well. Are you sure they are trustworthy? The results speak for themselves, don't they? These two may already know more than you could ever imagine. All right, then, if your grace insists. They seem harmless enough, so I'll trust them for now. Well, how about some reintroductions? This is Jurier, one of the highest ranked researchers from the Fontaine Research Institute. He used to work under Edwin. I trust that you've heard of Edwin? Yep. Good. Saves me a bit of time explaining. Edwin's main areas of research were archaeum and gravimeters. I don't know. Jurier is quite familiar with them as well. I hired him to be my technical consultant. You... You want to blow up the Fortress of Meripede? Ah, what a lovely idea. I'm already imagining it in my head. Gotta admit, I'm tempted as well. Guys, focus. Focus. <laughs> <laughs> that taskmaster over there is Miss Lorveen, and is also one of my technical consultants. While Jurier used to be Edwin's assistant, she used to be Jurier's assistant. Ooh, are they together? Not really necessary. See, everyone keeps asking this question. Are you too sure you're not a couple and just using your work as a convenient cover? I... Your Grace, I am not in a relationship with this man. If I dated her, I'd officially be madder than Edwin. Jeez, I forget I said anything then. <laughs> Whoa, there's another door that goes right up. Your constant amazement makes it seem like the fortress can do anything. That's just Paimon. Like, oh my god, the sky is blue! Like yes, Paimon, it does that. Is this just a normal room? Well, let's spice it up a bit. And here you go. This. What a huge ship! This is also a production zone that Paimon's never seen before. What's going on? How much do you know about Fontanian history? I, uh, not much at all. We're building an ark. Well, then maybe you haven't heard the story of ancient Lemuria. To give you a quick rundown, Fontaine used to be ruled by the Lemurian dynasty, according to legend. The Lemurian king Remus came to this land after being inspired by a divine revelation and found the seer Sibylla, who had taken on the form of a golden bee. Taking the golden bee with him and riding on a huge ship, the Fortuna, he created his nation above the surging waves. He called his nation Lemuria and used the Fortuna to incessantly search for new tribes and islands, calling on them to join his empire. There's a ship in the story too? Where there's water, there'll be ships. People believe that hope can always be found at the end of a voyage. Do you believe that too? To a point, I think. As you've already seen, I have a whole factory's worth of labor, materials, and technology at my disposal. Certainly can't hurt to give it a try. So the moment I began to speculate that the primordial sea might lie underneath the gate, I also began this project. Were you inspired by the legendary Fortuna? Hmm, maybe. Fontanians need something to hold on to to cope with the impending disaster. Well, this is a plan for the ages. For the workers to find out the truth behind this ship, riots would destroy the fortress faster than any catastrophe. As the fortress's administrator, I'd never make such a reckless call. All right, that's enough talking for now. I'll need another three cups of tea to soothe my throat. Do you have any other questions? Seems like you're good. Come on, I'll take you back. 
Oh, it is an arc. Really curious. <laughs> And this is my arc, Railgun Kirito. I'll leave you here for now. Oh, uh, thank you so much. No worries. But don't forget, it's up to you whether or not you want to share what you just saw. What you do from here on out will likely affect those three as well. Oh, sick! They made the nerd nexus from the hit novel. <laughs> Don't create the murder nexus. <laughs> it's a good novel, I like it. Means that my actions now will decide the next steps Lenny's groups takes. In other words, if I want to tell Lenny the truth, I must make him understand that we cannot afford excessive conflict right now. Yeah, we'll put a lot of thought into it for sure. Yeah, we will. Great. I'm gonna I tell him. I don't think I get a choice in the matter. I'll be honest, Genshin's not the type of game that lets me choose if I tell secrets or not. Also, hi Ed, good morning. Oh god, it's morning. Oh. Oh. <laughs> We're back! Welcome back. Do you want a cup of tea? Everyone's talking about tea. I swear to God. Be so much like Rise, Always drinking tea. Huh. Actually, now that you mention it, I just remembered something now. While I was sedated, I could still barely hear two people talking next to me. They were discussing everything from the leaves to the water and even the teacups themselves. Must have been Risley and Sishwin. Yeah, I heard one male voice and one female, so... It should have been the two of them. They really were just talking about brewing tea. I really can't make sense of this place. So, Traveler, Paimon, were you able to learn anything from Risley? Yeah, he explained everything. Very well. Then, would you mind checking your answers against my speculations? I'm feeling better now, Lainey? Yeah, I took the time to rest, so I'm feeling a lot more relaxed now. <laughs> Double Ford Antivius. <laughs> can I veto a name I can barely pronounce, please? <laughs> I would be leaving for work in 15 minutes if. Ow, jeez. I weren't on call. I'm glad you're on call. Especially after the, the Pubber episode. Nobody else is around, and Miss Sijuin is also busy with something or other. So let's just talk here. All right, then I'll posit my theories. I asked myself three questions. Firstly, why was Fremenet affected by the primordial seawater? It was because he dove into the sea. My theory is the long lost primordial sea is probably very close to the fortress of Meripede. Mm -hmm. Seems good. He got that right on the first try. That's our Lenny. Secondly, Risley's attitude changed dramatically during the course of our stay here. He ignored us completely at first, then suddenly roadblocked us. Why? I spent quite a long time thinking about this. If he has been monitoring the Fatui since the very beginning, he probably ignored us at first because he was hoping we could find Master Child for him. What's more, the Fortress of Meripede is not part of Fontaine's court system, nor does it report to Udex Nervulet. Risley is basically the king of a no-man's land. Uh-huh. As long as the Fortress doesn't do anything about Master Child's disappearance, Father can use it to pressure the Fontaine authorities. And while the two factions are pitted against each other, Risley will be free to move between the parties of interest. If I had to guess, he probably has something that he's working on himself. It's likely related to the secret of the infirmary, but I just can't think of what it could be. Wow, Lenny's grasp of the big, pic big picture is amazing. You're super smart. <laughs> Thanks so much. Then finally, there's the last question. If Risley does have a plan, what could it be? All I know for now is that his plan probably has something to do with the changing nature of the seawater. 
He's even gotten Cloran to help him out. Uh, that can't be the full extent of what he's doing. There's probably a secret passageway behind the block in the infirmary, and there's something big in the fortress that most people here never get to see. He has a bargaining chip, and it could be important enough for Father to deal with him directly. I don't have enough information, so I have no idea what his chip might be. But let me guess. You have the last piece of the puzzle. Thank you for the lore dump top hat alpha now. <laughs> I love the name Top Hat Alpha Node. There's some deliberation. You share the information you just learned with Lenny and company. While sharing what you saw, you emphasize that now is not the time for. Blah. All right, game. I can't believe it. We must see. Will engulf everyone. Just like the prophecy said. Could Risley have wanted to meet Father to figure out a way to deal with this crisis? If you remember. I once mentioned that Father sees the House of the Hearth as her base of operations, and she truly wants to resolve the crisis. But how could Risley have known that? Because he's been following you, and getting reported on you, and you've said that multiple times. Or perhaps he didn't know, and just wanted to bring Father over to his side? Which could be why he said he just wanted to negotiate. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I understand your concerns as well, Traveler. I'll figure out a way to pass this on to our father. No matter what, we're on your side. The two of you have already aided us far too much. We probably wouldn't be standing here right now if not for you. If you ever need anything else going forward, please come to the House of the Hearth at any time. Though you may not share the sentiment, after all that we've gone through together, the three of us basically see you as family now. You have my gratitude. Thank you for protecting Lenny when it really mattered. And thank you for sharing the secrets of the fortress with us. We didn't think you were going to do it. I literally wasn't given a choice. The game did it for me. Uh, why are you being so formal all of a sudden? We can work together again if necessary. Given your strength, we might not need our help at all. But if you are ever in danger, we will try our best to protect you. Aww, the sound of that makes Hyman feel all warm and safe inside. What was that? Uh, Paimon... Paimon's hungry! Of course Paimon's hungry. Oh, uh, you've done so much already. Go get some food. I don't want food, I want answers! <laughs> Why do we have to go to the cafeteria, Paimon? You piece of junk. Paimon! <laughs> Why? Food and answers? Get a grito. We might actually get both here. Hi, Minwai. That we have been here for like forty days, and they have not a once used this PA system. <laughs> Can choose? Yes, we can. I've already talked to our chef, Mr. Wolsey. It's all on me today, so you can get whatever you'd like. Oh, that's nice. And all the tastiest stuff you have to offer. No problem. Just leave it to me. We're gonna get weird meat, isn't it? And also bring some drinks over to you. They taste a little strange, but she insists they are very nutritious. Yeah, the shakes generally taste pretty terrible. <laughs> Amazing. Paimon's so happy. Paimon wants to feast like this every day. <laughs> Feeling full yet? How's the food? Delicious. Exquisite, thank you. Uh, I'm so glad to see you all so happy. Oh, see the expression on your face just now? But the muscle here just moved. Which suggests that you're feeling quite relaxed at the moment. Siegwing, do you do this to help your patients or to better understand human beings? Probably both. Bit of both, I suppose. MMLazine, which means 
them very different from human beings. I must know what you're thinking if I want to take good care of you. You're really good at taking care of people. Even though you're so short, you still talk and act like an older sister. Really? You're reminded of an older sister? <laughs> That's great to hear. Oh, and what did you mean back in Risley's office? When you said that you were protecting Linny and his siblings as well? Oh, that. I just asked his grace to look out for those children, especially that diver boy. I was getting a bit worried after hearing that something was wrong with the water. Thankfully, Garand is very strong and managed to save him in the nick of time. His grace also sealed the pipes after Glorian left, to make sure that Linny wouldn't impulsively chase after his brother. Oh. Although the path was blocked, they still stationed some guards there to stop anyone from approaching. They were instructed to only open the door once Miss Glorand had returned. Oh, and I was keeping an eye on Mr. Linny as well. We had to press him, but we couldn't allow him to be in any real danger. You were all super considerate and really thought everything through. <laughs> it's just what we do down here at the fortress. At least this has been his grace's style for as long as you've been the leader. Oh, I really wish Miss Jerinervula would come down here more often too. I feel like he'd like it here. <laughs> With all the darkness and chaos. That doesn't make sense at all. It's hard to imagine Nuvalet outside of his office. Get a good night's rest, you two. You both worked very hard. Oh god, we're already at the ads again. It's bad. Time is being stolen from me by get <laughs> by Genshin Impact. Alright. We're so close, I can taste it. We're so close. We are just going to steamroll through the ads again to try to get through the end. What happens if there's more story? <laughs> Don't say that. Don't say that. Please don't say that. It's not gonna happen. We'll get to the end and it'll be like, this quest is over. And I'll be like, yay, a final stopping point. Why am I super sleepy? Are you sleepy too? Yeah, I'm also getting there. I'm a little sleepy, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Me in like 30 minutes. Oh, she really immediately fell asleep. Delicious. I'm on one seconds for free. <laughs> That's really cute. Good night. What's that sound? Wanna wake up? We need to get out and see what's going on. I feel like the pipes are leaking more than normal. For us. It's Timon and Pumba. We came here especially to inform you. Something seems to have gone terribly wrong just now. His Grace is telling everyone to evacuate and get out of here. Uh. I was saying you two are new here and you don't have many friends, so you might slip through the cracks. 
Haven't you heard all the stories like that? An evacuation is successfully completed. Yet you only find out once you do a head count that one or two people are missing. Wait, weren't you the one who brought that up? Why is it suddenly my idea? Hey, shut up! Okay, whatever. The point is, you should come with us. You said his grace said to evacuate outwards? Yeah, said to get as far away as possible. Upwards and outwards. That means whatever happened must have happened down below. No, isn't that gate at the very bottom? It can't be that thing! Whoa, wait, what? What? Hey, where are you going? We have to go find the Duke. You two just go and get out! Go on without us! Hey, hey! Be careful! Well, they came to warn us, though! Oh, shit's going down, yo. <sighs> They're here. Just like I said. Be ready to run. My dude, you're not gonna stop it yourself. Or maybe you will. Look at him fucking go. This won't hold it for long. Find Nuvilet. Tell him the defenses are about to collapse. Then what will happen to you? Until he arrives, we're the last line of defense. <sighs> the gate. How long do you think it'll hold? That depends on us. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty cool. The Grimace Shake is broken containment. Traveler, I need you to head to the Opera House immediately. Farina will soon be meeting with the Knave there. You must protect Farina. And make sure she doesn't spend too much time alone with her. Okay, you can explain everything else to me later. Will do. You have my sincerest gratitude. Ark, you did this to me. <laughs> How dare you conjure more story? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. instructions please follow me okay so real quick this is what the melisine look like and like the girl who's gonna be a playable one looks human just with the horns and tail and it's like missed opportunity though i'm sure he's already explained this should be a mostly cordial conversation unlikely to give rise to violence 
But it would be most appreciated if you could protect Lady Farina to the best of your abilities. I'll do my best. You're right, we aren't allowed to have nice things. Why are we here? Just to suffer? Oh, so you two are the honored guests Miss Farina mentioned. Hello, the knave. Of course, of course. How could they not attend an evening such as this? I must always have two or more guests at my dessert table. Otherwise, the occasion would be too lonely and unbecoming of my station. <laughs> no, Ark! Ark, you have to hold on! <laughs> Please, hold on! It is my pleasure to make your acquaintance, Traveler. I have heard much of your accomplishments. I am the Knave, one of the eleven Fatui Harbingers. So this is the Knave, the head of the House of the Hearth, and the Lenny sibling's father. Certainly does not seem easy to deal with. Pleasure to meet you too. Me. Perhaps you two are unaware of how Miss Farina and I do things. You see, we actually recently agreed to get together for tea when we had the time. See this? This is a limited type of confectionery that Miss Farina simply adores. There are only 16 slices sold every day. Here, why don't you and Paimon have a taste? Why would you go KFT in front of you, Ark? It's friendly enough. But that can't be all there is to her. The knave is a force to be reckoned with. Be very cautious around her. Traveler, what do you think of this cake? It's quite tasty, and I think Paimon agrees too. That's good to hear. So what child said was on the mark after all. You do share a taste in desserts with Farina and I. Wait, child should have no reason to have said something like that. I wonder how he's doing nowadays. You must have heard, right? He's suddenly gone missing. I'm really worried about his safety, you know. Here's to hoping that he's an excellent swimmer. I don't like her vibe. I have faith in his abilities. Uh, since we're talking about him, I feel like I should add something. His martial prowess really looked... Certainly pretty impressive, yeah. Rina looks quite nervous. There must be some kind of bad blood between her and the knave. Oh, so you are also familiar with his aptitude for fighting, Miss Farina. Oh, right. I almost forgot. Child was subdued by Udex Nubilet right in front of you. Against ordinary people, my colleague would never be on the back foot. But alas, he just never imagined he'd run into such a person. Hmm. I must express my admiration for Monsieur Nubilet. I just to find a few leads on his whereabouts. Hmm. Coming from you, that's not surprising at all. Uh, but I thought you would be happier to hear the news. Of course, but it's still a bit of a shame. You see, I would have been far happier had I received this news somewhat earlier. As you well know, a long time has passed since Child disappeared. No, no, that was only tonight to me. <laughs> Just how do you know that? Because... Uh, because we found evidence that proved he left the Fortress of Meridid! And where did he go after leaving the Fortress? Well... Our statement just left us wide open. The Fortress of Meripede lies deep beneath the waves. Unless he pranced right out of the main gate, he must have had to swim for it. Do you have any proof that he surfaced safely? Paimon, why do you speak? We do not. There's also no evidence that he's been injured or killed. Oh, 
That is good news at least. His sister Tonya sent a letter to Fontaine not too long ago. Since he was unfortunately unavailable, I picked it up on his behalf. Do you have any idea how he usually writes back to his family? Dear Tonya, your letter made me feel like we were still enjoying our time in Snezhnaya together. I'm currently admiring the scenery on the streets in front of the Opera House. Is it something like that? Bring up the pressure. I'm not sure if I'll be able to convince her, but I can at least try to distract her from Farina. Sounds good to me, yes. And right? 14 has corrupted me to not taking drinks from strangers ever again. Yeah, I didn't like it either when she offered us food. I was like, Ugh. That's good to me, yes. All letters tend to follow the same few formats anyway, right? As long as the contents are accurate, it doesn't matter so much how it's written or how it's worded. That's not true at all, Farina. Hold on. The water in the teacup is shaking. You son of a bitch. And you were right. I suppose this is also a sign of things to come, Miss Farina. Huh? Uh, I don't quite understand what you're trying to say. Have we entered into the next stage of the prophecy? <laughs> My thanks to you both. I will take it from here. <laughs> sure you don't need a hand? Quite sure. Wow. So, what's your secret, huh? Uh, let me guess. <laughs> ah, who knows? Maybe it's just your sense of responsibility. <laughs> hmm. Sounds about right. What's people gonna do? Peepaw? Peepaw's gonna be okay, right? The prophecy is fulfilled, and the waters burst forth. But it is not this day. This ancient power could easily obliterate an entire race. A tsunami of fury would unleash endless catastrophe. Oh, he hit it with the good old put that thing back where it came from or so help me. Why don't we call him in the first place? It's the other side of the unlimited chug jug. Oh no! Seems like the problem inside has been suppressed. Let me guess. We're safe for now. <laughs> Indeed. But only for now. I win this bet. You owe me a present. Uh, very well. It was indeed just as you said. You made a bet? We made a bet on the size of your entourage. Cloran thought you wouldn't come down by yourself. I figured you would have at least brought a few people along for appearance's sake. It appears I underestimated just how confidential the mission was. Shouldn't you have gotten used to confidential missions by now? That's just how the courts operate. So what gift must the loser give? Tea? Hmm. He already has tons of tea in his office. I'm thinking about a set of legal codices. That wouldn't happen to be a dig at my lack of legal awareness, would it? Well, I'm sure His Grace doesn't consider the fortress to be outside the law. I was under the impression the residents of a place like this would be uninterested in the legal codices. <clears throat> that was obviously a joke. <laughs> anyway, you've still got 
got some unfinished business to attend to in the overworld, correct? No need to stay here if you have a pressing matter. We all know you can't leave Pele Mamonia for long. Thank you. I hope everything went smoothly with the Fatui Harbinger. Seem to be going smoothly. Meanwhile, I must say, we've spent long enough playing house. Miss Farina, as the Hydro Archon, I am sure you understand the exact meaning of the phenomenon we just witnessed. Or should I say, that's what I originally thought. But looking at your expression, was I wrong? And you haven't a clue? What are you trying to say? At this point, I don't think there's any more need to speak as diplomatic representatives. Allow me to speak to you now as just a Fontanian. You know the prophecy by heart, and also that every part of it is being proven true. Yet... Here you are, relaxing, drinking tea, and eating desserts as if it's all nothing more than a few stray bugs in your garden. Do you really think that's acceptable? The prophecy's hanging above our necks like a guillotine. Every faction is looking for a way to either avert the disaster or save their own. Even the orphans of the House of the Heart have devoted everything to saving their homeland. But you... It beggars belief just how nonchalant and carefree you have been. From the very beginning, you, the god Fosalur, you have utterly failed to take action. You're wrong. I've never ignored the prophecy, nor have I just been passing the time in self-indulgence. Retract your accusation and stop doubting the wisdom of the gods with such absurd conjectures. I am not alone in my doubts, you know. All the children of Fontaine may be harboring the exact same thoughts right now. Oh, great Hydro Archon. How are you going to save them? Save us? How are the people you've sworn to protect supposed to survive in a land that will soon disappear beneath the waves? I have my ways. And I've been working on them for all this time. Even if you look down upon me, you have no right to judge me! Fontaine will be saved. Even... Even if I still cannot see the true future right now. As long as I continue on as I am, I will be able to hold my head up high! She's not acting like her usual self. She's actually seriously refuting the knave's accusations. She means what she says. She's not putting on a front. Then I ask you, Miss Farina, just what have you been working on? Where can we see it, and what is it doing to help? <sighs> I... Is that all a lie, or can she really not tell us? She was so full of conviction and confidence just now. Now she's def deflated like a pop balloon. My machinations are just like the prophecy itself. They will only reveal themselves at the fated time. It is just that beings like yourselves are unable to perceive them as of yet. Mm, I see. As a god, the proof of your labor always lies beyond prying mortal eyes. Allow me to be so bold as to ask another way. Would it be possible for you to tell us the parts of your plan that are not confidential? Such as your emergency response plan for the impending disaster? An emergency response plan? Oh, Farina. <laughs> oh, that look in your eyes. Have you not even prepared one of those? The, the emergency response plan is also strictly confidential. Then allow me to jog your memory. Miss Farina, what is the purpose of your oratrice mechanique d'analyse cardinal? And what do you plan to do with the massive amounts of indemnidium that has accumulated over the years? The oratrice? It, it's just like it appears to be. Hmm. So you also have no idea. If I'm not mistaken, someone's using it to prepare for something. But unfortunately, it would seem that someone is not you, Miss Farina. 
I first caught wind of this when Linny tried to investigate the Oratrice in the Opera House. You see, even just getting close to the core contaminated him with an extremely large amount of indemnidium. But even if that had nothing to do with you, then what could you possibly be working on, oh great Hydro Archon? Oh, right. I almost forgot. Udex Nuvillette is not at the tea party with us today. Miss Farina, I suppose you must have ordered him away to take care of some troublesome business. Ah, uh, yeah, yes, that's exactly right. Please keep it a secret for me. Of course I will. Although, I must say, Miss Farina, you seem quite insecure without the Udex by your side. Oh, very well. Let's stop that conversation here. There are still a few slices of cake left, so please, help yourselves, everyone. These aren't topics I can speak about. I don't even know what Nouvelle's task was. If I had to guess, he probably went down to deal with the surging primordial sea, but can he really deal with it all by himself? Is Farina being truthful or not? Traveler, I heard that you were recently commissioned to handle a few matters on behalf of the Udex. Why don't you take an extra slice of cake? Those who work hard deserve gratitude and praise. You too, Paimon. Uh, thank you. Paimon will take you up on that offer. It proceeds to change the topic and brings up a number of less significant matters. Blech. Why is it so fast? Oh, Paimon's super full. That cake was great. <laughs> if it's on my tea table, it must be of the highest quality. Uh, yes, and we must thank the knave for bringing these over as well. You're welcome. I'm sure the cake also felt greatly honored to be featured at Miss Farina's table. And I was merely catering to Miss Farina's tastes, seeking a chance to chat over tea. Mm, it is getting late. Why don't we call it a day? There are still a few matters that I need to take care of, so I must take my leave now. Very well. We'll end it here. Mind seeing me off, Traveler? We could use the opportunity to discuss child before I must be on my way. Of course. Paimon's coming too! Well, of course you are, Paimon. You literally don't leave. I literally cannot get rid of you. Yikes. Oh, that was like a side room. Interesting. Yeah, she really do be having all her eggs in one basket, huh? Things aren't looking super great for Fontaine. I'm gonna be honest. I'm glad that you were willing to come with me. Of course, child was just an excuse. I have no interest in your dealings with him. Yeah, I figured. That's what Paimon thought. What do you want to say? You lent your aid to the children of the House of the Hearth as their father. I would like to express my gratitude. There's no need. There's nothing else you wanted to say. That was all. Formal topics should be discussed in formal settings, and informal topics in informal settings. I know you just returned from the fortress of Meripede. Relax. I have no intention of trying to get anything out of you. Linny, Lynette, and Fremine are still there, and I trust their judgment and abilities. They've all been working very hard and have always done all they can to fight back against anyone who tried to stop them, especially Lenny. You mean Ridesley. He's a tricky one to deal with. Mm. It's unfortunate that Lenny's so eager to prove himself that he can't learn to rely on others, including me. By the way, and you can just consider this a bit of idle gossip, but what's your impression of Farina? You are outside of our disputes, and the freest person in all of Fontaine, able to move around most easily. Allow me to share my perspective with you. And that's everything that happened during the trial. Master Child was declared guilty and immediately transported to the Fortress of Meropede. Didn't he say he was coming here on vacation? 
Does he not feel an ounce of shame for all the trouble he has caused? Uh, I, I... Forget it. He did give us an opportunity. I will be needing someone shortly. Do you require help with any preparations? No need. I will take care of it myself. I need to meet with Valina, the Hydro Archon. She is hmm. the heart of Fontaine. But what's fascinating about her is that she often seems more like a celebrity than a working Archon. Oh? Come over here, you little critter, you! Bless. You dare to run from me? Stop right this instant! It's not good with cats. My goal is just to discover the location of the Gnosis. But I didn't expect the chance to approach Farina to be handed to me on a silver platter. <laughs> This is so easy, it's actually making me a bit suspicious. Anything left unguarded is usually just bait. But no one will blame someone for taking bait. After all, from the moment it was attached to the hook, the bait is meant to be sacrificed. <laughs> it's just as I guessed in the second before I struck. The hydronosis is not currently held by the Archon. Run, Kato! In fact, this Archon doesn't seem like a god at all. And I sense that she's under some kind of curse. Who are you? What are you trying to do? Please, don't kill me! I'm begging you, please! The fear in her pupils is genuine. So perhaps she's not bait after all. Either way, targeting her has lost all meaning. Hmm. I left the scene with ease. Nobody came looking for me, and nobody could serve as a witness to my near assassination of Fosalor. I suspect even Farina dares not mention this incident to anyone. That's why she's on edge around her. Not long after, my informants confirmed what I had guessed. After returning to her quarters, Farina quietly cried alone. She was so scared that she could not sleep that night, nor could she even bring herself to eat her cake. There's no doubt that there's something wrong with her. I began to entertain the possibility that she is not the true Hydro Archon. Perhaps Udet's Nuvulet is actually the genuine article. I have to find the Gnosis. If the Nuvulet hypothesis is correct, he is probably in possession of it. Alternatively, it might have been hidden in a place that's hard for ordinary people to access. Yes, father. My dear children, please speak. News from the fortress of Merapid. Master... Master Child has gone missing. On top of that, the contacts and guards we bribed at the fortress have all gone quiet as well. Probably the handiwork of that Ridesley. I'm afraid so. This is a good opportunity. The value of a Harbinger is much higher than most would imagine. We now have an excuse to exert diplomatic pressure on the Fontaine authorities. Set up a meeting for me. I would like to meet the Hydro Archon and Udex Nuvulet. Oh, and I have an additional mission for you three. Yes, Father. Tartaglia's disappearance was not a part of my plan, but I can use it to make a breakthrough. With this as my excuse, I can ask for an official audience and continue my investigation of Farina and Udex Nuvilet. The initiative belongs to the House of the Hearth. My wish to investigate the Fortress of Meripede will be a front. Linny and his group will be responsible for the actual intelligence gathering. Hmm. You should know the rest. Linny's group is quite close to you, so they wouldn't have hidden anything from you. Y you attacked the Hydro Archon? It wouldn't mean anything, even if you shouted it from the rooftops. After all, even Farina herself is still pretending that nothing of that sort ever happened. Uh, all right then. I've now had two chances to enjoy tea with Farina. I have to say, the leadership of Fontaine is even more inscrutable than I had imagined. I once surmised that Udex Nuvilet must be the Hydro Archon. But now, that doesn't seem right to me either. 
How did you come to that conclusion? I am a servant of Her Majesty the Tsaritsa. Over my years of service, I've learned how a real Archon conducts and carries themselves. Whether Udex Nuvilet or Farina, neither fits the bill. It's hard to imagine either of them as the Archon. Of course, that is all just how I feel. Gut feelings often do not require justification. It is, however, quite amusing to me that after all my years working in intelligence gathering, I've come to realize I am at a complete loss regarding the identity of the god of the land of my birth. Don't you think Fontaine is quite intriguing? A catastrophe looms, yet many secrets have yet to rise to the surface. <sighs> it looks like Fontaineans will have no choice but to save themselves. Ultimately, though, one must survive in order to do anything else. Should the need arise, I would be happy to cooperate with you. You don't need to commit to anything right now, of course. I have a feeling that the situation will continue to evolve. And as your name is often connected with noble deeds, I'm sure we will work together someday. Nuvala? He certainly returned quickly. You must want to catch up with each other, so I'll leave you to him. Bruh. Hmm. Nevelet, is it over? For now, yes. But this issue will prove quite thorny in the long term. I am concerned that sooner or later the prophesized events will occur. Thank you for protecting Farina. May we ask what happened down there? Hmm. To put it simply, I used my power to force back the Primordial Sea and reseal the Sluice Gate. For what happened on our side? We recount the happenings of the Tea Party to Nouvellet. Hmm. So as expected, Beneve has turned up the pressure on Farina. She's trying to feel her out, though I'm still unsure as to her motives. Can I ask you some questions? Permission granted. Enough power to force back the Primordial Sea. Does this mean you have some deeper connection with the Hydro Archon? Whoa. It can't be that you're the real Hydro Archon, right? But that's just a speculation on our part, though. <laughs> you can't tell us? Then... Then that's okay. We can talk about something else. We won't try to force you. <laughs> you guys in Fontaine are super strange. If by the phrase, you guys, you are referring to Farina and I, then although I'm not sure just what you are trying to imply, I must clarify that I do not share her positions on a multitude of topics. What did you sense in the Fortress of Meripede? I believe so. What? The fortress has a long and complex history. It has seen much grief and suffering. And now, another catastrophe will soon be upon us. I mourn this turn of events. Huh? Why is it raining all of a sudden? Because he's sad. He literally says, I mourn. Clear sky is suddenly filled with dark clouds. The rain became heavier. Light rain soon growing into a downpour. Moments before, Nouvellet had just mentioned a sense of grief. Looking back to that legend, what Fremet said, it said that a dragon of water once resided in Fontaine. Every time it weeps, the skies will cloud up and pour over rain. Nuvalet, you can't be. You may be closer to the truth than you think. Oh? And what are you thinking? He's the dragon sovereign of water. The dragon of... Uh, what? Huh? Please do not be so surprised. <sighs> Farina? My apologies. We were just guessing randomly. We didn't guess right, did we? You're not actually the dragon sovereign of water, right? Well, if you don't want to confirm or deny... <sighs> you guessed correctly. I sincerely hope you'll be able to keep this a secret for me. The dude literally has dragon eyes and pointed ears. Uh, right, of course. We'll definitely help you keep it a secret. The dude's literally mentioned how humans are weird. I didn't realize it was a secret. That's how obvious it is. Please, go ahead. Well, if you are the Dragon Sovereign of Water, 
and you were able to force back the primordial sea from the fortress, then since Fontaine's prophecy is all about seawater, couldn't you just use your power to solve the crisis? None of the currently living dragon sovereigns in the world, myself included, possess our full dragonhood. They say that when the first usurper arrived on Tivat, they seized a part of the dragon's power. Today, that stolen power is the basis of the Archon's authorities. The Gnosis? There are seven elemental Archons and seven matching dragon sovereigns. The dragon sovereign of water who lived through that era perished a long time ago. As their successor, I know far less of that part of our ancient history. In any case, I believe I will not be able to do much unless the Archon disappears and returns their elemental authority to me. Given the status quo, however, I would recommend finding another way to deal with the prophecy. Oh, so even you can't solve it. I still have some urgent matters to attend to at my office. If you have any more questions regarding ancient history, you are welcome to discuss them with me at a later time. Ah, please go right ahead. There's a place that Paimon wants to go to. Traveler, why don't we pay another visit to the Fortress of Meripede? Paimon is a little worried. Yeah, why don't we have more story? That sounds great, sure. We'll see you another time. Take care. <laughs> I can't keep getting away with that. Wait, where is Hong Kong, hello! Thank you so much for the raid! Welcome in, everybody! Oh, we might be. I mean, like, we'll suggest. We might be at 14 hours! We're being held hostage by Genshin Impact story not ending. It's so long. Fontaine is so long. Why is the story so long? <laughs> but thank you so much for the raid. Welcome in, everybody. I hope you had a great stream. You just finished. It's 12. Oh my goodness. Well, yes, if you need to do any after stream stuff, go in and get some food, water. If you need to go sleep, if you need to do any of that stuff, please take care of yourself. However, feel free to chill here with us if you'd like to. To be fair, you did start it after a few patches. That's true. That's true. You got me there. I'll admit. I don't remember what teleport. It was so refreshing to be out of this place, and now they're dragging us back in. I think one of them's over in the office over there. I think yeah, I was the latest character. Oh man, it's been a while. Yeah, we're pretty deep into the Fontaine quests now, which is two whole nations after when you last played then. But I really do appreciate the raid. I hope you had a good stream. Deep Rock is an amazing game. Rock and Stone. Yes! Kanyu! Kanyu! Kanyu's best character, Archie, best girl. Based. Based opinion. Um, I am just trying to railroad through the rest of this so I can end in sleep and no peace. So I will say, once this is done, I am also going to raid out and call it a... Uh, I'd say night, but it's 7 a.m. <laughs> so I don't know when that is. If it is soon, I apologize. Uh, I feel bad since you just raided. But until now we're caught up with current quests, we're going. You better at C2 or C3 with free to play? That's crazy. I have her at C1. And it wasn't free to play. <laughs> Did spend money for Kanyu. She is, like, my answer to all problems in this game. Anything too troublesome, 
Ganyu. Throw Ganyu at it. Boom. Problem solved. Uh, a bear teeth cat? Well, well, look who it is. Hamlo is me. Traveler, Paimon. Oh. Hello, everyone. Oh my gosh, I'm so tired I forgot to say. Anyone coming in with Yasmugi? Hello, my name is Double I'm a battery themed VTuber. I like to keep everything positively charged. Welcome on in, everybody. We love and appreciate lurkers here, so do not feel like you need to be active in chat. I appreciate you guys. Appreciate you all. Mm -hmm. Looks like you're recovering nicely, Fremine. Mm hmm. Thanks to everyone's support. Oh, right. I. I managed to work up the courage to thank Miss Clorand in person. Oh, how did she react? Uh, she told me that it was nothing. It was as if saving a life wasn't a big deal to her at all. She also told me not to worry about it. She didn't want to stress you out, that's all. She's right, and it's best not to dwell on it. Yeah. Okay, but check this out. We went back to the Opera House, and we met the Knave. You met Father? Did she say anything to you? She said a few things that were... Uh... A bit hard to understand. And also that she's looking forward to working with us in the future. A little surprising. Her attitude towards you is even better than what we'd imagined. <laughs> That's fantastic. You should believe her. She has her own way of doing things, and she'll do everything in her power to help those she considers close, which now might also include you. Mm-hmm. That feels kind of icky, but okay. And also trustworthy. You guys are a little biased, but okay. Oh, Paimon just remembered that she thought Linny was a bit too proud as well. She said that you should learn how to rely on others sometimes. Uh, got it. Huh. That does sound like something that father would say. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to stay here for the next few days? Looks like it, yeah. Excellent. I will host a tea party. For real? Then Paima wants another serving of cake. Another implies that you were already served some delicious cake while you were up there. Hmm, how lovely. <laughs> next time, you're going to have tea and snacks with us. All they eat is cake. That's all they eat here is cake. Where's the actual food? <laughs> All you feed me are puffins! I need nourishment! Alright, what's going on with you? He's fine! Siegeween! that too! Don't worry, we're both doing great. We are fine, but what about you guys? It was such a huge mess. How bad was it? A few people sustained superficial injuries, but that's about the extent of the damage. Monsieur Nervulet paid us a visit. It was all thanks to him that we managed to suppress the crisis for the time being. Oh, of course, we must also thank you for the help you provided. <laughs> Baby Ganyu! How did Nervulet know that he was needed here? Monsieur Nervulet has strong resonance with the hydro element. When the water level rises, he can feel the waves produced. He does have the same little hair swirls. I ran into the bombshell bros while bandaging the injuries of the wounded. They were mumbling the whole time about how you just ran down without a word. I'm so relieved to see that you're both alright. If you're not too pressed for time, please stay with us a few more days. Just let me know if you get a craving for any particular dish, so I can have Mr. Wolsey get your meals prepared. Oh, and please feel free to visit the infirmary for a break at any time. She's so cute. I'd like to take the opportunity to spend some more time observing your facial muscles as well. Your happy smiles are quite contagious, you know. They're so memorable, and I've missed them immensely while you were gone. Oh, ho, 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 ho. so like where we are now is a prison. And there is like this, there's like these secret rules that weren't meant to be broken. And one of the rules was if you work three days in a row without taking a break, on the third day when you go to lunch, something horrible will happen. And the horrible thing is you'd get a really weird meat in your lunch and it'd be gross. 
Well, really, it just turned out at lunchtime every day, since she's the head nurse of this whole place, she'd go observe the people working. And if she noticed anyone who had been working three days in a row, she'd go into the kitchen and make, like, a special thing that's meant to help you and, like, boost your health. It was a bit, to her, it was a special treat. But she's not fully human. She's a meliswine, um, which is a race for Fontaine. And so she doesn't know what people like. And so it's, like horrible and disgusting food but it's just honestly her trying to be helpful and super sweet and it's really cute that you you guys are back and then these two are essentially timon and pumbaa and i also adore them you guys didn't get caught and thrown back down here right Ah, and here I thought you'd managed to escape from jail during all the commotion. I'd held you up as legendary jailbreakers, but now you're telling me you just never left? No, we did. Uh, <laughs> we're sorry, but we just had some business to take care of. All right, all right. There's no need to get caught up in the details. We're just relieved to see you. He was super worried about you, you know. Hey, it wasn't just me. Weren't you super worried as well? Uh, something like that, yeah. I was also <laughs> transferred to work in the kitchen a few days ago. I can still hear Quisto mumbling to the carrots. Are those two all right? Do you think they made it out alive? <laughs> Whenever he'd say that, I'd tell him I'm sure they're fine. Wherever they are, they're kicking back with drinks in hand, enjoying the lovely scenery. Hey, there's nothing wrong with worrying about your prison pals, is there? I mean, considering how they always love listening to all my gossip. Thanks, these two. They sure are a lot warmer and friendlier than when Paimon first met them. I'm sure the welfare meals must have just skyrocketed in quality recently. Oh, well, if you say so. I'll be watching you to make sure you finish every last bite. We just need to talk to one more person, and I'm sure we're done. Stuff did kick off, though. Oh man, there was a, a animated like sequence, a whole whole cutscene at one point, and it was just mwah. Man, when MiHoYo animates a cutscene, they're just... Why are you in jail? So, we're... Here under false reasons. We got, we got sent down here fake. We're investigating why one of the Fatui who was in here disappeared. And so we were doing an investigation under the ruse of being arrested. You told me you still haven't eaten. Yeah, I was working on something, so I forgot. Uh, that's no excuse for y Huh? What's you two? Yeah, yeah, we're mean, we're back! Hello there. It's been quite the mess here recently. How have you been? We're fine, thanks. And you, are you still taking the secret passageway from the infirmary to work on the ship? Yep. That is still top secret, though. So don't say a word to anyone. It can be a bit annoying when there are lots of people in the infirmary, but I still prefer taking that route over the one from the Duke's office. I mean, the infirmary does make it easier for you to slack off. Oh yeah? Then why are you also here so much? You two really are just using your jobs as a cover for your relationship, aren't you? Not at all! <laughs> oh, they totally are. <laughs> oh man, the man's be sitting. Do my eyes deceive me, or did I just see two inmates come back after making it to the surface? Some strange winds blowing of late. We wanted to see how the fortress is doing. Is everything still all right? We're fine for the most part. Nervalet came down and took care of the worst of it. If that's the case, why don't you just ask him to stay here? Oh yeah, what a brilliant plan. 
Let's go convince the Udex himself to exchange the Quartz of Fontaine for a puddle of water in the middle of the night. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna work. He came here in a hurry and left without even stopping for a cup of tea. He did remember to take Miss Sijuin's gift with him, though. He sure sounds super busy. Miss Cloran has left as well. She also took her gift from Miss Sijuin. Were the gifts milkshakes? Nervalette got the milkshake. Clorand received lipstick instead. <laughs> even remotely alike. Well, it's Nervilette's own fault for making Sijuin worried about his health by working so much. But besides that, our head nurse is still pretty fond of picking out beauty products for the ladies. Oh, and I have some gifts here for you as well. Are these from Sijuin too? Nope, they're from yours truly. You've already wrapped up your work at the fortress, so you can return to the surface at any time. You haven't yet served your full prison term, however, so you may continue to use your cell until your term is up. For real? Then we can stay here for a really long time? <laughs> this food's still covered. You may access the cafeteria for free. <laughs> Just remember to come complete your paperwork once it's time for your release. They really were like, yay, we get to stay in jail. Oh, this place is a madhouse. A madhouse! <laughs> Wild. So tired of uh, the, the vertical structure of this place, though. And you're right at- Hey! Don't call me crazy, I resemble that remark. I'm gonna spend our whole stamina bar getting to our room. I missed the giant secret? Well, too bad. I don't care! Feels like a huge weight is off our shoulders. Sure feels that way. But the truth is, we never did anything bad to begin with, so I'm not sure why we put so much pressure on ourselves. Paimon, is there something you'd like to say? Huh? How did you know? You usually just immediately fall asleep. Hey, that's not true! Alright. Okay, Paimon just wanted to say that we really are an amazing duo after all. It's like, we've now gone to so many places together and become friends with so many people. We've never stopped traveling or stopped meeting new friends. There are so many bad things in the world, and we're just two people, but we've still been solving problems no matter where we go. Isn't that pretty cool? Why the best adventure was ever. You're counting Paimon today? Aren't you the only adventurer here? Being a guy counts too. Uh-huh. Uh, just a thought making Paimon giddy. Oh, oh, Paimon's gonna crash, so you sleep soon too. The last time we fell asleep here, we woke up to a whole mess outside our cell. The primordial seawater nearly rose up. That was so scary. Send Paimon to the forever box. Oh my god. We'll be fine, so don't worry, Paimon. All right then. Good night to you, traveler. Good night, Paimon. And the place blew up again. Oh. Hey, yeah, we don't know where Child is yet. He's in the soup. Big whale! Big whale in the soup! It's Kyogre. It's not another quest, right?
We did it. We're done. We've cleared all the current Fontaine story. It's over. It's really Jover. It's not done though, there's still more. But for now, it's Jover. We're gonna put, yep, cool. Put that in there. We did it. Look at our achievables. Bang. 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 How many primos are we at? Not bad. We're almost at 5k. And 30 wishes stored. That's pretty good. Time for the side quests. The Naida quest. Later. We'll devote a day to them. It is so past my bedtime. It is 7.30 in the morning, essentially. <laughs> Ow, cheese. It is... Yes, it is definitely EP time. I will be back later on today for Amogus with friends. I need to find somebody to raid out to. And honestly, if I can't find anyone, because this is a super weird time of day, we're probably just gonna end. So we have a couple options. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I see Red on, I see Asami on. You guys want to see Ren playing Lies of Pee Pee? Okay. Raid Ren. Ren got his new PC. Let's go Pog. All right. And it's smooth AF. Nice. Consider me jealous. Well, then, without any further ado, we're going to raid out to Ren. Double A is live. Raid them. I, I was I was considering doing a bit However, I'm too tired. I love you guys, but I'm too tired There's the raid message. Here's the follow raid message You all are beautiful bright shining stars Thank you so much to everyone who's raided us Lexi. Thank you. Kobe. Thank you. Ah Not those bits. Thank you though MP and yes, Moogie, thank you so much for raiding. If someone raided earlier in the stream and I forgot, I'm very sorry. I don't remember how to words even. <laughs> I'm gonna crash super hard. That way I can make sure I'm conscious in time for Amogus. With Alu, because it's Alu's birthday and I would hate to miss that. But yes, please, please. Go ah! sleep. Ow, thank you. I will go eat. Please uh, share in sending good vibes over to Ren, especially as he's playing Lies of B, and that game can either be super easy or super hard. Should be a fun watch, though. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. This was actually a lot of fun. I know I got very tired at the end there, but I really did enjoy all of it. And I enjoyed your company. It was great. I had a really good time. I hope you guys have a good rest of your Friday. The raid is forcing me out. Oh, God. Bye. Bye. I love you all. Bye.